Hi folks, welcome back to the channel and thank you for joining me once again. So, lightning strikes not once, not twice, but thrice. Three lots of lightning. Now you're probably wondering why on earth have I got this kit out. I should tell you I wasn't going to open. It, but the answer is simple, it isn't actually mine. This is not the lightning F6, F2A from Airfix that I showed you a week or two ago. Somebody saw me and my plight and I had a new still sealed example, uh, an original 1997 as this is, but it was still shrink wrapped and somebody saw my plight and said look you can borrow mine so you can actually show it to people and you can see the differences and there is slightly more difference than I thought so I thought it was worth doing quite a short video today, you'll be pleased to hear, just highlighting on those things that we missed out on and just for you lightning enthusiasts to get another fix of your favourite plane. You know who you are. Right, so as we said it is 1997, it's the first issue, it was actually produced in France, I presume this one is exactly the same, I'm sure it will be. Yes, yeah, made in the EU, it's actually produced by Heller in France. So without further ado we'll look straight into it. The Mac 2 air superiority all weather fighter that was the lightning. And we will have a proper nosy this time, we'll actually get the sprues out and everything. Instructions are different, slight differences there, slightly different decals, decals, decals I'm supposed to say. We'll start with those, okay? So, now should I remove this or not? I'm going to, mm, I don't think I should take it off because it's not fair on the owner really, but just to give you an idea, these are in great shape. I'll zoom you. These are in beautiful condition and these are, I say, identical to the kit that I've got. So, this is a 09178 by the way, reference number from Airfix. So I'm just going to gently peel that back, I'm not going to put you further, I'm just going to let you see. They're kind of a semi-gloss, almost a semi-satin really finish. But it's a beautiful uh, set of, of decals. Um, you've got shark's mouth over here, which looks very cool. That's a nice addition, that's one of the Bimbrook squadrons. Quite a lot of Quite a lot of low vis, very small ones over here. So that's um, for the air interceptor rail, I think, which you often see over the, the North Sea, or did do. And then we've got the, the typical low vis RAF markings over here for various squadrons, which we'll come to later. It doesn't actually tell you on this particular. Oh, yes, it does, it's just very small. Flight 11 Squadron. Gosh, that's small, isn't it? That's 11 Squadron. That's eight, was it? Eight, 92 squadron, you can barely read it. I've got my fairly good glasses on, you're going to need some for this. So they've not made that the clearest, but they do look lovely decals, got to say, very nice. So I'll put those away when it's safe. Without further molestation, let's have a look at this different, with a nice photo of an F6 on it. Instructions, um, a bit of discoloration because of the paper that I think used to use wasn't the best. And I can tell you that a lot of the first couple of pages is pretty much the same as we've seen, so I'll just flash over that. Where the differences come in are on your F6 here, where they're giving you the option to drill out to put your overwing tanks on. So you can see straight away that we've got the option here to get some holes drilled. And uh, identification friend or foe, I think that is. Probe. Now, in flight refueling, what am I talking about? IFR, come on dude. <laughs> IFR, in-flight refueling probe, so that's when you're going to have the F6 with the, uh, the refueling probe as well. Now this is where it gets very interesting, and this is where it's completely different, so let me out here so you can see it properly. Start of the page is pretty much the same, the top section here where it shows the tail going on and the tail planes and the wings. All pretty much identical. Then, completely different, we've got uh, the option of the underbelly, um, what do they call it, the ventral tank. Now you've got ventral tank on the F2A or on the 1983 F6, the LTF version. What's that, late? I don't know what that means. Uh, but that's the late version where, where you've basically got, uh, and on the earlier version, the F2, you've got the tank. This is going to be a fuel tank underneath. Now this, this wasn't an option on the other, it was all just one piece. But here, for the F6, of course, you've got the option of the Aiden cannon in the belly, which is the thing that made the F6 much more potent. 
Can you see that? It's got the muzzle, uh, the outlet for the muzzle for the cannon, and some like uh, access hatches, and I think the cooling vent for the uh, the rotary cannon here. So that's really nice. It comes in two pieces, split. Whichever way you do it, I'm not sure about the wisdom of that. But there's going to be a joint there, isn't there? <laughs> but anyway, these are completely new and not in the previous kit. So, yeah, there's slightly more than I thought. I said it was just refueling probes and the overwing uh, tanks, but uh, the rest here is not the same with the undercarriage, etc. Same again on the next page. You can see the artwork's changed because you can see it's got the, uh, the it's the F6 they're showing in these particular pictures because it's got that again. See the Aiden cannon with the, the muzzle exit there where my thumb is. There. Okay, uh, still got fire streak of red top missiles, and then finally, last section is the over uh, overwing uh, tanks, uh, which are very streamlined at the back, which I didn't know actually. I thought they were just sort of round, but they're not. If you look, they're sort of really um, like a fish tail to them to make them extremely low drag, cut the drag effect. And they look great, I've got to say. And then we've got the, um, the painting options and the cut scheme. And we've got quite a few uh, options. We've got A, which is Gutter's Low Early 74 F2A. Next page we've got an F2A and Gutter's Low Late 73. Then we've got an F6 oh, RF Watership in 76. Next page we've got Binbrook F6, in, also in 86. And then we've got, is that 86? Yeah, sorry, 76 to 86, sorry, 10 years later. Then we've got the Binbrook 1984, this is the one that's featured on the cover of the artwork with the shark's mouth here, as you can see. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and then we've got six. Uh, RAF Binbrook 1983, this is the one that's got these very small low-vis decals uh, markings with the RAF uh, roundels and tail insignia, very small, extra fine. And then Group Captain John Spencer at Binbrook in 1988. This is just before they were phasing them out, of course. So, yeah, what's that? One, two, three, four, five, six different... Six? Seven, eight variants they're offering you. Eight different variants. I think that's absolutely fantastic. And then we have a page which is all, all your stencil data, and there's plenty of that. I can tell you. Whoa, there's a lot. How many are there? 250, really. Well, the numbers go up to 260. 261. Ooh, that's a lot of stencils. 261 stencil. Oh dear. <clears throat> it's a bit like the Phantoms, isn't it? You're going to be here doing this for a while, I think. And it even shows you here the ventral tank stroke Aiden gun pack um, that, you know, that has different markings underneath and different stencils underneath. Which is really cool. There's a planned view here of the um, this tail fin I was talking about, the sort of uh, fish fin style uh, on the overwing tank. So you can see that, that bottom view, just how slender they are at the back. So that's to cut the drag right down, front, rear, okay. Very impressive. Oh, there is a lot of stencils, that's going to be. Yeah. Oh, and at the back, we're actually giving a little treat here by FX, something they should do more of. Some photographs, look. So, uh, they're all in black and white, unfortunately, but um, at least you get to see things like those overwing tanks here. And a little bit of close-up detail of the cockpit and looks like uh, one of the uh, the main gear legs. Which is which is quite nice actually to have that, I think that's great. Wish I fixed to go back to it. So there we go. Um, so that's yeah, there's uh, three or four differences there that I didn't anticipate when I was telling you the other week. Oh, it's just a everyone takes a little bit more than that. Now um, I don't think I'm going to open the bag because it isn't mine. But we don't need to because we're in luck um, because all the important bits are on the sprue that's at the top. So I can zoom you in, you can see exactly what I'm talking about. And these are the only parts that are different from the other model that I previously reviewed. So if you look carefully here, here we have where my thumb is. I'll get rid of those reflections, there we go. This is the 
the uh, aid and gun pack underneath. Uh, so obviously this is where you have the option of the aid and gun pack or the ventral tank. Try and get a bit closer, there we go. But what I'm going to do is cut off some of the light because I've not seen much. There we are, that's a bit better there. So, if you look very closely you can actually see that's the exit for the aid and gun uh, for the muzzle, both sides. Um, and it looks really nice, it's very nicely moulded. It's, it's a lot of detail, surface detail on this. You can see the little latches, quick release latches where the maintenance crew would release it from. And there's quite a lot of... Uh, little, there's like a little vent in the side here. I think it's like a cooling vent, isn't it? Whoops. Can you see that? There. That looks really cool. And on the other side, of course, I'll just jiggle it slightly, gently. On the other side, you've got the option of the, the other uh, fuel tank on the F2A. This one here doesn't have the gun muzzle exit, just the fuel tank. So it's the ventral fuel tank instead. And then, if you look closely, you can see here, that is the overwing, uh, above the wing fuel tanks. Uh, they're big, aren't they? They really are. And you can see how they, they fade out and they have, I think they have like a bleed off valve at the back so if they ever need to dump fuel they can just release it and it comes streaming out of the back. Uh, like a vent basically. A dump valve if you will. Um, it's a nice kit actually. Suddenly it sort of livens it up a little bit. Um, more than the standard one. I particularly like this Aiden gun pack there. I, don't know, I still don't know if you can really see that but there's a lot of detail there. A heck of a lot of detail, surface details. I'd go for that option because the other one's quite plain by comparison. But it's still got all the latch de um, detail on the surface as well. So there you have it. Um, as I say, I'm not um, going to open the whole thing and uh, it wouldn't be fair on the owner to do that really. But uh, it's great that it just so happens that it's all on one sprue, which obviously differs from the original, uh, I can say the original version. It's actually the later version, one year later, that came out. The one that I reviewed first, with the blue background and the silver aircraft with the red trim. Um, but it's a cracking model, isn't it? That's, um, that's really impressed me. I'm quite enthusiastic about it now. I want to build it now. <laughs> anyway, there we go. So that is the, uh, the rather impressive, it has to be said, uh, the F2A and F6 Lightning. Back in, see what I'm going on about. There we go. It's got more impressive artwork. Nice shark's mouth. I hope you found that interesting. So you can see there's subtle differences between the variants and uh, I personally prefer this version, I think, the F6. Uh, it's the one I'd go for. Uh, you can't really see in the artwork, but that is the version that's got the gun. Um, they don't seem to have picked it out very well, but anyway. Quite an impressive model. hope you found that interesting. Um, I think out of 10, I'd give that sort of an 8.5, 9 out of 10. It's, uh, the moulding looks better than the, the other version that we first reviewed and yet comes later, a year later. Not sure why that is. But uh, yeah, it's quite quite impressive looking kit. Um, and as everybody will tell you, it's the best lightning that's basically available in any scale. So there we go. Hope you'll give us a thumbs up, hope you enjoyed the vid, uh, even that was a brief one today. And um, don't forget, um, if you haven't already, to subscribe to the channel, see all the other vids that will be coming up. Um, if you are a subscriber, ding the notification bell because that will give you early warning as soon as I'm uploading one for you. And uh, don't hesitate to uh, please comment if you've made the kit. I'm sure lots of you have. Love to hear about it. What, what were your experiences? Any problems? Do we end up with a big seam in the middle here? I think we might actually, but we might need taken care of. But we shall see. That's it for now, folks. But thanks for joining me very much. And until next time, look after yourselves, uh, stay safe, and thanks a lot. Bye for now.